Beverly Welch. We're here at the Arbor Gate in Tomball, Texas with our good friend Angela Chandler of the Garden Academy. Good morning, Beverly. What a gorgeous day to be in the garden. It is. It is beautiful, but we had a great fall. We did. A very mild fall. Plants were actively growing, had no cool weather to speak of. Nope. And then we got this two-day winter that was devastating. We were in many areas here below freezing, well below freezing, in the teens for over 48 hours. Yes. Most of us have citrus. We love citrus here on the Gulf Coast. A lot of people had newly planted, less than a year old, and even established citrus in the landscape. All had some type or some sort of damage. It did. Nothing had a chance to acclimate. The right. sap was still flowing, new leaves were still pushing. Right. So it really it really caught everything by surprise, including our trees. It did. And so even the well-established trees defoliated. We got damage like this on our younger trees. Right. So the most asked question right now, coming out of that weather and, and things starting to grow again, is what do I do? How do I prune a tree that's had some damage? Yes. Okay, one thing to kind of remember is that we, we did originally, after that freeze event, ask everybody to be a little patient and hold right. off uh, until March when we could see uh, how much active growth we right. were still gonna have, sure. and we're at that point now. And so we often see uh, young trees and even older trees with some, what we call the terminal tip damage. Okay. Down inside the tree, generally everything's leafing back out, but out here on the extreme ends that were the most exposed, we have some damage. So we see that we have some leaves up here, but we also have some dead twigs. And so in all honesty, it's really not uh, productive to try to keep all of okay. this. So on a young tree, we wanna come down where we see really healthy, vigorous new growth and we just want to be able to say, well, find a new place to cut. We've got a great bud here that can replace the top of this tree. And so we're going to be bold and we're going to just make a good angled cut about a quarter of an inch above that bud. This part of the tree is just, it's never going to look great again. And this part of the tree has the potential to flush out and be beautiful. And even on your larger trees that sustained a lot of damage, you'll do that with every terminal end. Come okay. back to a point that's full and actively growing. Go ahead and sacrifice that. You'll be surprised that if it was minimum to moderate damage, yes. you'll still have a beautiful tree this year. If you had severe damage, in two years, you're gonna have a productive tree making fruit for you again. Perfect. So I need not panic no. when I cut this off. No, we're, we're back now to where we have no dead leaves, no right. damaged foliage. This little tree with a little bit of TLC, some fertilizer and good mulching, it's gonna take off and be great this year. Wonderful. Now, if I had even more damage, Yes. So I'm not seeing any growth up here that is as obvious as this one was. I need to look a little further, depending on where the growth is emerging on the trunk. Yes. We have this very unassuming, not quite beautiful little plant here, which is our rootstock. Yes, this is trifoliate. Right, and we use this to promote cold hardiness. It's a native rootstock, right. it, but it produces inedible fruit and lots of thorns. It does, but it's very well adapted to our soils and to our climate. So when you see these grafted citrus trees, chances are that one of the trifoliate hybrids yes. is going to be this portion of the tree okay. for, that, for that adaptability. If you, if you lost the entire top of your tree, which right. some people have, especially on the more tender things like lemons and limes, uh, and you see new growth coming up from the base, right. it's still not necessarily all is lost. If you can identify the grafting point, which is easy to do on a young tree, right. not always easy to do on a tree that's been in the landscape for five or six years, but if you can identify this and you see growth coming up from the base, then you'll know chances are that it is the trifoliate rootstock, and your choices then are to either replace the tree or to regraft the tree. Those are the two main choices. Okay. A younger tree that would be easy to remove, probably the most expedient way to do it is to just replace the tree. Perfect. But in an older tree, if you can't identify the graft per se, and you see new shoots coming up from the base, right. uh, it's not necessarily trifoliate. Not 100% of our citrus is grown grafted. Some of it's grown on its own roots. So your clue there is to look and see if the shoots that are coming up from the base have this trifoliate leaf. And what that means is 
This is one leaf divided into three leaflets. Okay. okay. If we see that, then you know it's the rootstock, and you're back to making those choices again, right. whether or not to replace or regraft. However, if your leaf shape is the classic sort of lance-shaped leaf, uh, chances are that it could be your variety, that it may have been grown on its own roots or it may have been a seedling uh, growth. And so you wouldn't necessarily just make the decision immediately okay. to, to dig it up or replace okay. it. Okay, okay. And you do have the option of leaving this. You do have the option. You know, one of the things about trifoliate is it's interesting in the landscape. They're extremely fragrant. Right. They're kind of favored by, um, by live, you know, different wildlife. So all is not lost. You may decide that you just kind of want a neat, gnarly, fragrant little tree growing in your right. landscape. Won't right. hurt a thing. Okay, perfect. Now, let's talk a little bit about pruning. Yes. I know that you've already pruned a lot, but we want to, yes. this is March, and we have a great video already right, on the website yeah. about pruning. But I've noticed that you brought the long limbs back in nice and tight. Yeah, there were some very long limbs that were so, sort of starting to weep. Uh, that very vigorous growth, the stems sometimes aren't, um, aren't stiff enough. Right. And so we want to kind of watch for shape. And I did kind of leave one. One of the things I like to do early in the year is to balance the tree out so that as it makes growth, we have a, an even looking tree uniform. with good right. shape. Sure. So we would even do things like come back on this one and we would find a place right above a bud and tip that off. And then that's pretty much all we need to do on this, just light tip pruning. Perfect. This one is now blooming, and so we can leave these, these blooms down here and enjoy their fragrance. We'll remove the fruit from this this year uh, if, it, if it produces, but we don't need to remove the blooms. We can enjoy their fragrance before Absolutely. we have to let them go. Absolutely. So this time of year, what we're doing is we're, we're removing any removing damage. damage checking to make sure that we have our desirable tree right. as opposed to our rootstock. Yes. We need to be feeding. We do. Uh, we need to, this time of year, we need to do soil feeding and then we want to make sure that we're co well composted and mulched for the year. Right. And then we, especially with our trees that, that had a little bit of damage, we want to give them a boost. And so every two weeks, at, at, you know, I, I prefer at least once a month, we want to use a seaweed product or foliar plus. Right. Uh, we want to make sure that we drench all of the leaves, spray the bottoms and the top Perfect. until they're dripping. It's a very quick way for them to absorb minerals and get off to a good start and maybe be a little bit more resilient if we have another event like that this coming year. Yes, yes. And we even want to use our EM1. We do. We want to use our microbes. They also want to use are the beneficial. microbes. That's right. We have soil microbes a lot of us are learning a lot about. But there are also microbe colonies on the leaves, and EM1 helps put beneficial microbes so that it can fight some things like the black sooty molds and okay. things that we don't that we don't want to see on our so trees. So once a month now, it doesn't hurt to put the Arbor Gate blend, put it some doesn't. granule in, and also every other week or at least once at a least month, once a month, a good foliar feed. Good foliar feed, and they'll be right back. They will. It'd be awesome. They'll be off to a great start. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Beverly.